Um, but talking about U.S. soccer, gentlemen, uh, U.S. soccer repeals policy requiring players to stand during the national anthem. U.S. Um, at a virtual conference Saturday, the U.S. Soccer Federation's National Council voted to repeal a policy that had already been put on ice by the body's board of directors, making the repeal permanent. More than 70 percent of the ruling body voted in favor of the repeal. Multiple members spoke critically of the repeal before the vote, the most notable of which was seven aside paraplegian Seth John who trotted out an outrageous speech claiming police brutality to be a myth and denying the impact of slavery in the United States. Gooch, you're part of this U.S. soccer policy. Yeah, Gooch, you ready for this. Tell us what face. was Gooch. going on <laughs> during this whole situation, this virtual conference on this vote that you had a vote on. When you heard this gentleman with this statement, what were you doing? All right. First of all, probably, probably what are you doing now? <laughs> I, honestly, when it came out, I was I wasn't ready for it, and I don't think anybody was, uh, based on his opening statement saying uh, he said something to the effect of "I know I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers having that I'm on the athletes council." So once he said that, I was like, "Uh oh, what, what's about to happen?" You know. And then he made his statements that everybody has now seen or read or, or listened to or read, um, and honestly. I don't have any negativity towards people that are opposed to anything, right? So there's going to be people that are opposed to the, the repeal. There's going to be people that are for it. That's everybody's position. And you have the right to your position. Um, his words and his rants went far beyond being opposed to something to some really offensive ideologies that I just can't support. Right. Um, and so everybody has the freedom of speech. Everyone has the freedom of expression and thought. Um, and that's clear. And I'm, I'm for it 100 percent. He has the right to his his beliefs. But what we just all don't have the right to is the freedom from consequence. And that's essentially what happened to him. He, he, he exercised his freedom. He said what he wanted to say. And essentially us on the Athletes Council, we we, we voted him off the council, uh, just like you work at Best Buy, you have the freedom of speech, you curse out a client, <laughs> the consequences are you're probably gonna get fired too, right? Uh, and so for me, anybody that, you know, uh, uh, downplays the narrative of, of police brutality in America or doesn't substantiate it, it's crazy. And, and to say the least, I'm not even gonna give him a platform to speak on him, but anybody, right? There's, there's systemic issues in this country. <laughs> and anybody that doesn't know that those issues started way back before, it wasn't just one incident. It's a systemic issue. It's a problem uh, due to inherent overall issues within the system rather than just one individual or isolated factor, right? Um, and the only way to change a systemic issue or problem is to change the structure of the organization or the policies in said organizations, right? And then that's the only way to correct it. And him, or anybody else downplaying a systemic or a police brutality in the history of the United States <laughs> is ridiculous. Or even downplaying the effects of slavery, period. For me, I was just like, this is, this is ridiculous. Um, and I'm, I'm not gonna say he's whatever, but you know, after that, I think everybody went a deep dive into this guy because I personally didn't know him um, personally. And I know a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of people within U.S. soccer has showed support for everything he said, which was, for me, Well, well speaking about that, U.S. soccer, in a press conference after the meeting finished, board president uh, Sidney Parlo Cohn and Federation CEO Will Wilson said they hadn't heard all of John's remarks because of technical issues. Do you well, that believe was, that? That was it. Ah, oh, I, I, that's the first time I ever heard that. Really? When a reporter noted that John's speech included many white supremacist talking points, Paulo Cohn reiterated she hadn't heard it, but added, it is important to listen to different sides, whether it's comfortable or not. But there's absolutely no place for racist comments. So, okay, Goose, let me understand. Let me, uh, for me to understand this and for our viewers as well. Yeah. Is there, when you, when, for President um, 
Cindy, Cindy Cohn, if you start to hear some someone that you that obviously they have freedom of speech, but when you start to hear talk and they're having racist comments, comments that are that are above just his his opinion or his beliefs, is there a way that she could or anyone, anyone on the council could just mute his microphone or take out the conversation? How does that that kind of work? You know, hearing that because I hear that he went on for six, seven minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah. 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 He. Um, so is there's no way. Yeah, I want to kind of give me myself and everyone. How does that work when so that within the AGM, everybody, the members we that took part, it was sort of like a Zoom slash presentation format. But everybody doesn't have access to to video, and so if before voting on bylaws or voting uh, on the vice presidency, um, they open the floor to individuals who want to speak their piece for or against anything. Um, and then I guess you have to uh, signal that you want to speak. They allow you to speak. They open your mic and then you say your piece. You can only hear the audio that you don't see the video of the person. Mm -hmm. And so when it was his uh, opportunity, that's when he started speaking. And it was you know, to say that it was longer than everybody else is an understatement, right? So he started going and <laughs> I feel that they were uncomfortable. So at one point they stopped him and was like, all right, we need to get past 30 this. seconds. And then he was like, wait, 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 wait. I got, I want, I got finished. They, I got they told him he had seconds. 30 seconds left and he went yeah. on for another three minutes. So, so they allow, oh, him, wow. they, allow they, him to go on. They try, to, they try to be polite and say, okay, we need to move on. And he was like, stiff armed them and like, no, I got to finish this. And they were like, okay. Mm -hmm. and, hey, he's a tough guy, retired, um, um, retired uh, military. Um, he's a former police officer. He did three tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, he's an M MMA fighter. He fought in, in Asia and as well as Europe. Um, and he's a center forward like Gooch as a player. Um, mm -hmm. But Dude, Which my, is all great, by the way. Nobody's yeah. downplaying anything he's done. Yeah, my, my, my issue, yeah, tough right. guy. My issue is it was two hours after the vote that they had a press conference. Within those two hours, you can't tell me that the president didn't get debriefed or somebody didn't have a statement or have an issue and brought that up within those two hours. That's well, my issue. At the end of the day, um, they are obviously documented it because there's transcripts of it all over the internet in, in written form, right? So whether you heard it or didn't hear it, you definitely had an opportunity to read it um, like everybody else. So I, for me, I think that it would have been a, a, a great opportunity for US soccer to not take a neutral stance in this and to actually say if they condemn what he was saying or not, right? Um, which, which we haven't seen with, you know, which is, uh, has transpired. But for me personally, it was something that I was offended by. Um, and everybody's entitled to, to their, their speech. Um, but, and, you know, one of the things that he said is like, you know, that he'd support anybody if they do it on their own platform, you know, in their own time on their own platform and he'd support whoever is kneeling or whatever. And my point is like, an appeasing protest is not a protest at all, right? <laughs> like, who's going to do a protest that appeases the people that you're protesting against, right? Exactly. It, yeah. it, it, it makes yeah. no sense whatsoever. So basically, you're saying you're entitled to your opinion or yeah. your actions as long as I'm good with it, yep. right? right. Uh, which, which is ridiculous in, in, in any sense, whether it's uh, an issue that I agree with or disagree with. Um, Moving to... Polisic, unfortunately, he it came out this week that he liked one of John's former statements. Uh, I don't have it in front of me here, Gooch. I don't know if you have it, but is the bigger question is should should Polisic be ridiculed because he liked on Twitter a post that John put up? I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, ridiculed or not, everybody's entitled to their opinion. If he truly liked it, he truly liked it. You remember um, what the statement was? It was saying something, I think, to the effect that um, Seth John said something about shooting or killing Antifa or something like that, like getting rid of Antifa. Don't quote me. It was something about uh, getting rid of Antifa or shooting Antifa. Can you find that, Bees, that tweet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so in the day and age we live in now, right, 
how responsible are you for just liking the tweet? Because sometimes I can go over tweets and maybe hit the like button and then really read the whole thing. Or is that bullshit? Is that something that we can't, we can't look at it that way. We got to say, listen, tweet, tweet, uh, our president, former president was a big tweeter and tweeting now is coming like the Bible, right? It's coming like a situation where it's almost like your profile. Mm -hmm. So how should we judge Christian moving forward with him liking this tweet? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's something you have to ask Christian. If that's what he really believes in. Cause I mean, he, in that, in that, in that, um, in that article, he actually, you know, he still, he liked what Weston put up as well. Uh, Weston put up the, um, enough the, is enough. Yeah. Enough is enough. Um, a Twitter post or IG post or whatever it was. And he liked that, you know, so I, I don't, I don't know. That's something you have to ask Christian, his beliefs and what he believes in. And maybe Here's he doesn't care. Maybe he tweets. didn't. I'm Here's not trying some, to give Christian a pass, but I don't know. Here's some of the past tweets from Seth John. He, one tweet he wrote, uh, Islam, the religion of murder, hatred, slavery, and bigotry. Sad and pathetic. Um, here's another one. He goes, the most sensitive of races, no doubt. If someone asks me what color my ties are, I'd be compelled, frightened to reply with anything other than the darkest shade of gray in order to circumnavigate um, the atrocity, the what? Intricacies. Intricacies of their sensitivity, exhaustingly pathetic obviously yeah. talking about the black culture and the black race um, but, but he's for the but he's for the people so in my in my in my thing is like obviously you have to go past in the back pack uh, in the past and obviously what he did recently is whatever but he kind of doubles down on his ideologies with saying uh his remarks about islam with saying that black people as a race are pathetic right and you don't tell me that and sensitive and sensitive don't tell me that you're for us, you're with us, you'll do this, you fought for us. And you're telling that a, a race, not a person, a race right. is pathetic. Because that's the same ideologies that we're fighting against, why we're kneeling, because you think of this, right? So it's, it's similar to this whole Black Lives movement. Everyone, a lot of people are like, oh, I hate Black Lives Matter, the organization. I'm like, okay, the organization and the movement are completely different things, right? So what's the opposite of Black Lives Matter? people will say blue lives matter. No, the opposite of black lives matter black is lives black lives matter. do not matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't, don't uh, saying blue lives matter is a response, right? It's not the opposite. Like, of course, blue lives matter. Of course. And first of all, there is no such thing as a blue life. It's police. Yeah, police, their lives matter. Nobody's saying they don't. Nobody will say no, police lives don't matter. But the people that are against the black lives matter movement will never say yes, they're mad, they matter. They'll always be like, everyone's lives matter. Okay, well then just say black lives matter then. What, right. what, what's the problem with that? Why is it so offensive to you to confirm that my life matters, right? And, and that's my whole issue with this whole thing. I, I think people are so narrowed in their, their way of thinking or I don't know, they, they're caught up in their own minds that they actually don't see the actual true problem and how it's not a problem from today or five years ago or 10 years ago, or even before we, before we were born, before our parents were born, right? And so this is, like I said in the beginning, a systemic issue. This country systemically has suppressed minor, minorities and most specifically black people since it's existed. That's facts. You know, ed ed educate them, Gooch, educate them. I'm trying, you, you know, you know, Seth John is not only a person who sat on the U.S. Soccer Council. He was head of security for the U.S. Women National Team in France and served that position up, up until 2019. So this is a person who was around the U.S. soccer for many years, played a major role. Um, you know, he was in charge of our security of, of our women's in, in, uh, in, in France. You know, that, that was a very you know, stressful time. And, you know, it just shows you how many people um, in the U.S. Soccer Federation, you know, we have to kind of um, uh, vet, right? You have to go through again. We have to, we have to wash everybody out and start again, man, you know, to really get um, true equality, to really to get uh, the right people 
um, in the right places and, and to and to move forward correctly. We gotta we gotta start and build again. Right. And it's not it's not saying I'm not I would never downplay his service, right? In the never. military. I will never downplay whatever he said he was doing in anti-trafficking of women and children. Yes. Unbelievable work. You know, thank you for your service to the country. Your past successes do not take away from your current failures. Point blank period, right? I can't be like, oh, I was so nice in middle school and I was a valedictorian in high school and then I murdered somebody now, but please think about what remember, I did. Remember what I did before. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah, what I yeah. did before. Don't, don't judge right. me on now, right? I right. have to, you, because you took the initiative for us to see you. You took the initiative to verbalize and express how you truly feel. Not just once, but as, as Mookie was reading his past tweets and retweets, but on multiple occasions. So as you wanted people to know, you have to be, you have to assume the response from the side that does not agree with you. Just like there are people that agree with him and you've seen in his uh, Instagram tweets, there's, there's members of the national team that agree with him. Um, and there's, there's big personalities in media that agree with him. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? But just as people that are for you are entitled to it, people that are against you are entitled to it. Do I condone what he was saying? People were sending him death threats? 100% no, never, right? I will never verbally or physically threaten somebody, right? Or condone violence. Or condone yeah. violence of any sort, right? But I will also not condone the disinformation that someone is trying to spread to promote a platform, as he said, you know, I'm, I'm moving into the political uh, uh, area right now. And obviously he has a platform right now, which is his prerogative. But he's going to be huge. He's going to be but huge. Mook, Mook, when, when were those tweets that you were reading? When, when, did, he, when did he make those? Uh, 2000 and... Some were 2017, some were 2020. Yeah. So if he's saying these things in 2017 and he's posting it and, you know, people are liking it or not liking it, whatever. Um, do you think that there's a, there's a responsibility for us soccer to, to, to not to follow their players and see actually what, well, what they're about and what they say and actually have a conversation with them. Did it go, did we wait too long to actually find out who Seth John is? Well, that's, my, is, that's kind of he, like my he, question. He, 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 he's I think we knew who he is. He's, he voted, was. he's voted into a council. It's not U.S. soccer that votes him in, right? It's us. It's his peers that voted him into that position, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's a process. Um, so to say that U.S. soccer is responsible for him being on the athletes' council is uh, – I, I, no, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was asking. I was asking the question. It's, right. But I you mean, said it's – yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a hard place to be in because, like – I was part of the same council that he was. I am part of the council, same council that he was. I had no idea about any of this until recently. Right, right. All right, so egg on my face for not doing a deep dive from four years ago on this guy, but I'm not going to do that to anybody because I take people at face value what they present to me. And yeah. up until recently, that's not what I was presented with, right? Yeah. I hear you. 